um, think of things. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that what I see in God is that He can destroy everything and, and like, and, like, like instantly. Mm -hmm. That's why I respect Him than my parents, because He's the greater power here. Yeah, but you're respecting God just because of His power, but not because you love God. See, you're doing it for a wrong reason. You we're supposed to do whatever we do for God because we love Him, not because we are afraid of Him. So what we are doing is we are just like, oh, don't, don't, don't hit me. I'm, I'm not going to do that because you're going to hit me. No, that's the wrong attitude. See, you're doing the right thing but with the wrong attitude, with the wrong heart. Then if your heart's not in it, it, it doesn't make anything. It doesn't make any sense. Like, okay, let me put it to you like this. Okay, so my wife and I, when we got married, supposing I took a big stick and I walked up to her and I started beating her and I told her, Woman, I gotta be at work at 8 o'clock, so you better get your thing out of bed by 6 o'clock and make sure my shirt is ironed, my pan is ironed, my food, my breakfast is on the table, and I have food packed for my lunch, and my shoes are polished, and all of this, and if you don't, I'm gonna beat you, right? What do you think she's gonna do? She might she might get up at 6 o'clock and she might do everything I asked for, but what is her motivation now? Because she doesn't want to be beaten here, right? But supposing I don't say anything to my wife, right? But she still gets up at 6 o'clock and she does everything I ask her to do without me using the stick. Why? What is she doing it now out of? Love. So which would make me, my heart happier? To scare her into doing it or to see her doing it out of love? Which would make me happy? Do you understand? So this is what God is. God is about. God wants us to do it because we love Him. It's not, it's not the rules don't change. It's the same rules, but we are following the rules for different reasons. In one way, in one of the ways we are doing it because we are afraid that God is going to come back and hurt us. Right? Because of His power. But God doesn't work like that. So, when we talk about honoring our mother and father, we can just give them a little bit more respect. And let's, let's try it. Let's try it. Without <coughs> any more questions or, or objections, okay. let's try it for a week and see what the results will be. Right? Because the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Right? The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Just try, just try, try respecting your parents more. I know you'll already respect them, but let's try respecting our parents even more. Don't roll our eyes at them. You know? Try to listen to things and see it from their point of view. A, a lot of the times we take, we take stuff for granted over here. But I, I'm, a, I'm a, a first generation immigrant to this country. I moved to the States from a third world country, and you won't believe how bad things were over there, right? We ran away from there for a better life, and we struggled, my wife and I, we really, really struggled for, for many, 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 many years, until we reached this point where, I wouldn't say we are, we've reached there, but we've got to a point of where we are comfortable, right? But my, my kids don't know anything about that. They don't know about all the struggles that I've been through, and if I even try to explain to them, it, it won't get there. But uh, sometimes they will talk to you like, you're not worth anything. Hey, if I am not worth anything, you wouldn't be here in the first place. Right? They would have still been in a third world country, suffering over there. Because the mom and dad took the risk of leaving that place, coming to an unknown country, and you know, working day and night to build a life for us. But we take all those things for granted just because we are born over here. You don't know what your mom and dad have been through. Try to put yourself into their shoes and see life from their, from their point of view, and you really start learning to respect them a lot. And that's the same thing we do with God, because we don't know all the things He's done for us, that's why we don't respect Him. But if we just start understanding what it cost Jesus to die on that cross for us, and to be separated from the Father, if we just start understanding that, we would be falling on our hands and knees every day and saying, thank you Father, thank you Father, for what you did for me, that you died for me, so that I don't have to die. Do you understand? So, I know they talk about the Ten Commandments. Don't lie, don't steal. These are easy ones. The honor, I think the honoring of the father and mother come first. Because life starts from, from our home. And yeah, we can, we can not lie, not steal from our friends. Um, we don't commit adultery. So what's the big deal there? Because maybe we never got a chance to. Right? We were never given an opportunity. So we don't commit adultery. That doesn't mean that you're keeping the law. You're keeping the law because you never got a chance to. You, you don't go to the, to like say to Walmart and see a CD that you really, really like and try to stick it into your pants. Not because you don't want to steal, 
but you don't do it because you're scared that the security guard will come catch you and knock you up in jail. So you're doing it out of fear. It's not the same as keeping the law. God says you do it out of love. Do you understand? The motivation has to be love. That's why Jesus says, I'm love more than anything else. Love. Love is the factor that God put into everything else. He said, without love, everything else is meaningless if we do anything. So what do you think about this big guy from India who doesn't believe in God, okay? And he comes here and he does a lot of charity. And he gives food 24-7 and gives clothes to the poor and everything. But he doesn't believe in God. If he goes up to heaven and God says, you're going to hell, would you be surprised? But he did all good things, but all of his good things didn't me measure up to what God's standards are. He didn't believe in God, so he's gone to hell. You see, our, our, our logic and God's logic, different. God's logic is different. We need compare. to find out what's God's logic. So they can't be compared. We can, be, we can compare it. And how can you compare it until you start reading the Bible? Because you don't know the, the whole truth. You only know a part of the truth, and a part of the truth is not the whole truth. Right? Right? So like, like for example, let me explain it to you in a very simple way. Okay. Which book is on the right? But I say it's this one. So who's right? You or me? Oh. Who's right? You see what I'm saying? Okay, so it's one of the ways. It's either you're right or I'm right. Yeah. So it's all, it's all if, I, if I'm ruled by my conscience, I'm going to say, I'm right. No, I'm right. He's wrong. But he's right. But God is looking from above, right? He can judge from a different perspective. Do you understand? I know religion, I mean this is this is not gonna this is not gonna happen like you come you come to the religion class here and then all of a sudden one day you know it's it's a it's a gradual increase increasing of the light. If you just pay attention and you start learning and keep an open mind, slowly you start understanding, right? It's it's a it's a it's a it's a long journey. It's not a journey that's going to do to happen in one step. So we come to, ch to, to church, we come to, 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 to religion class, but we also have to read our Bibles. We have to. Because, for example, supposing whatever Mr. Neil is saying may sound, may sound right and may sound very nice, but I'm saying something totally opposite to the Bible. How would you know? How would you know? How, how could you know if what I'm saying is the truth or I'm not? How could you know? See, that's the only way. The only way is for you to read the Bible for yourself. Then you know for sure that what Mr. Neil is saying is, is actually in the Bible or it's not. Then this is how we discern the truth. God, Jesus, that's what Jesus tells us. He says, read my word, study my word, and then when you hear somebody coming and saying something that doesn't agree with the word, then you know that that guy is a liar. Right? He's a liar. And don't listen to him. So this is how we can be fooled because Satan... Satan takes God's word and he twists it. He just twists it a little bit and he makes it sound like it would be something God said. But it's not because it's twisted. It's not the truth. It may sound like the truth, but it's not the truth. So you want to start asking some questions? Sure. Go ahead. Okay. So, so you know, uh, like, uh, Buddhism mm -hmm. or other kind of gods around the world, right? Isn't that like another aspect of God in itself? Like no. Different aspects. No, there's no such thing as aspects or or any other way you want to call it. What is the different? Okay, can you can you can you take all of the religions of this world and put them on one side on one side and Christianity on the other? Yes or no? What do you think? This is what some of the religions will teach you. They say that life is like a scale. You put all of your good deeds on the scale, you put all of your bad deeds on the scale. If the good deeds are more or heavier and the scale goes down this way and the light scale goes up, the bad scale goes up, right? So you have done more good than bad. So where do you go? You go to heaven. And if your bad outweighs your good, and the bad comes down, and the, and the good goes up, you go to 
hell. All right? So yes, I agree with the concept. The concept sounds very good. Your good is more than the bad. So for the good, you go to heaven, right? What about the bad that you did? Who gets punished for that? Who pays the price for all the bad you did? You see, this is the difference between Christianity and every other religion on this earth. Every religion, there's no religion in this whole world that you can come up. And any religion where there's a prophet or, or, the, or the person who initiated the religion like Buddha or Bhagwan or whatever that ever said that they are God. Jesus is the only one who came to this earth and he claimed that he was God. He didn't say he was a prophet. He didn't say he was a holy man. He didn't say he was a good man. So when somebody says, I am God, that's why the Jews wanted to kill Jesus. All right? That's the whole reason the Jews wanted to kill Jesus because he kept claiming over and over again, I am God. He didn't say he's a man. He said, I'm God. All right? That's why they wanted to kill him. So there's only three explanations when a person says that he is God. Either he's crazy, right? He's a lunatic, he's crazy, he's a liar. What's the third? He's telling the truth. He's telling the truth. There's a lot of other religions that say, oh, we accept Jesus, that he was a prophet and he was a good man. So if Jesus said that he was a prophet, I mean, if they say that Jesus was a prophet and Jesus was a good man, can a good man be a liar? Yes. A good man be a liar? How could he be good if he's lying? If you lie, you're doing it for selfish reasons. You only lie to cover some weakness in yourself. So you can be good. So if Jesus is a liar, he can be good. Can't be good. He, he can't. A prophet cannot lie. If a prophet is lying, then he's not a prophet. Because he's a liar. A prophet will tell you something about the future. And if it doesn't come true, is he a prophet? No, he's not. Because you caught him in a lie. Right? That's what a prophet does. A prophet proceeds a future. Look at Jesus. Jesus gave sight to the blind. He made the deaf hear. He brought the dead back to life. When they talk about the man with the crippled arm, we, we, in, in, in the English translation, they say the man was crippled, had a crippled arm, and Jesus made it whole again. But that's not what the Hebrew says. You know what the Hebrew says? The Hebrew says that he didn't have any arm. It was just a little stump. Right here, okay? It was a little pity stump. You see somebody with just a little stump? And they just wiggled it like that, all right? And when Jesus told him, let your arm be made whole, you know what happened? The whole arm came out like from nowhere and he had everything, fingers and, and thumb and fingers. How can you take that away? Where, where do all those miracles go? That's the reason why the, the priests were, hated him so much. Because every time they tried to discredit him, Jesus did another miracle. And who can do a miracle except God? Jesus walked on water. Jesus changed water into wine. Wait, question. Why did they refuse to accept him? Because they said, he said he was God, and according to their belief, no man could be a God. But he wasn't. He, he was a man. He, he was incarnate because he came in flesh, remember? Uh, Wrapped in flesh. But he was born without a father. So he was, he was special. He was something different from every other man on this earth. And they were expecting something different. And they were expecting something because even according to the scriptures, in Isaiah, it was promised that a virgin would bear a child. Right? It was their own scriptures. It wasn't, it wasn't that it was not their scriptures. It was their scriptures. And the scriptures were telling them that this is going to happen. And when it happened, they didn't accept it. But the wise men that came from the east accepted it. Because they came to see the king of kings. Right? I haven't seen much of the world yet, but I believe that that much of the world is love. The what? That much of the world is love. It's all about fear and hate. Yes, that's true. Because the world is not running according to the way God wants it to run. If God wanted to run perfect, you would be honoring your father and mother. Like you said yourself, that you haven't been honoring them. That's not, that's not God's will. Do you think God doesn't want you to honor your parents? He does, but if you don't honor him, is it God's fault? Oh, see? So, so then should I blame myself? Well, who's at fault? If it's us, we have to accept that we are at fault. That's the only way we can correct ourselves. If we don't accept our fault, we'll never correct ourselves. Because we always think we're right. 
right? Am I right? See, the first step, if you're an alcoholic, the first step, what is the first step to, be, to, to, recovery, to recovery for an alcoholic? What is the first step? To admit his fall. Without admitting your fall, you cannot go anywhere. So this is what God is teaching us through this whole book. When, when God says repent, that's what God is saying. Admit your fault. That's all he's asking for. He's not telling you to go climb a 10,000 foot mountain or go swim 10,000 feet in the, deep of the depth of the sea. All he's asking us to do is repent, fall on our knees and ask for forgiveness and believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for our sins and he says you're forgiven. He's not asking us to do something like go to the moon. Why can't we do something that simple? You, who went to church this morning or yesterday evening? Did any of us attend mass? Yeah. Did you all listen to the scripture? It was in the language. Okay, the scriptures were, was about a man who died, Lazarus. And there was a rich man. And the rich man died and went to hell, or Hades, and, the, and, and Lazarus died and went to heaven, right? And then the, 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 poor, the rich man wanted uh, Abraham to, to send him back so he could go warn his parents or his brothers, his five brothers, so that they wouldn't end up in, in the same place he was. And he said, uh, Abraham told him, uh, you don't need me to go warn them because, because what? Moses and the scriptures are there for them. But their brothers never picked it up. So whose fault is that? And he said, you know what? If somebody goes back from the dead, they'll believe. And Jesus said, no. Even if somebody from the dead would have to go back, they still wouldn't believe. So Jesus came back from the dead, right? And this whole book, the second half of this book is all about Jesus coming back from the dead and telling us. And we still don't believe. So what Jesus said, was that true or not? Jesus said that even if somebody from the dead comes back and tells you, that if you do this, you're going to go to hell. So don't do it so you don't end up in hell. We still do it. So what Jesus said, is that true or not? See? So who do we blame? Do we blame God? Because we don't listen? Or do we blame ourselves? And we admit our fault. And we say, God, we are wrong. And, and of course, we can admit our fault and we can still make the same mistake. But we have to keep going back for confession because sometimes it's hard to recover from a habit so uh, God understands that we could make a mistake like say for example if we say okay we're going to go home and start honoring our parents and we honor them for two days and then the third day we don't so we say oh I messed up again and God's not going to forgive me yeah he is you recover you stand back on your feet and stop doing it again okay God will forgive everything God forgive Adam and Eve right yes were there consequences? No. Yes, there was. I mean, I mean, they were exiled from having a little bit of food, so they suffer sometimes. But... So there's consequences. Everything is forgivable except for one thing, and that's blaspheming the Holy Spirit. Not accepting Jesus Christ, right? But everything can have consequences. You can be forgiven, but you got to deal with the consequences. Adam and Eve sinned. Their consequence, they were forgiven, but their consequence was they had to leave the, the Garden of Eden, right? So that's a, distinct, a distinction we have to realize. And one, one more point, which he had pointed out earlier, the one you were asking about suicide. Um, as, I think as far as the Catholic Church is concerned, we do consider suicide as a sin, and, and it's considered as a mortal sin, and that's one of the reasons why they don't even allow the body to be buried in a, a, a blessed ground consecrated ground, what we call consecrated. Uh, but again, uh, uh, we, we can change God's rules. We can change God's law. Okay? But again, somebody commits suicide, the final judge is going to be God, not us. Not us. Okay? So, uh, I, I don't think it is, it is in our place to judge anybody. We, we, we don't need to take God's job, job away from him. Let him do his job. The church tells us, he, if the, he does the final judgment, we are not the judge. Okay. Uh, it's 8 o'clock already, so let's just wrap up with uh, Hail Mary. So everybody please stand. Does everybody know this? You know the Hail Mary? You know the Hail Mary? You know the Hail Mary? Okay, that's what I fear, because nobody's been praying with us. So uh, next week I'll put the Our Father and the Hail Mary copy for everybody to participate. Just ask everyone has a yellow book, but you can't because all the prayers are there. Ah, there you go. Do you all have the UCAT book, the yellow one? Yeah, everybody should have it. Who else doesn't have that book, the yellow one?
Well, how many more? Y'all all have it? Yes, ma'am, you? Okay, so we got, you don't have it? The, the yellow book, and you don't have it, so three. Three of us. All right, so this uh, name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Good to see you again, guys. See you again. Basically everything except that one thing, but you're too embarrassed to Well, that is not a confession. So it's boring. Well, well, you know about it. But, but you know what? It's gonna it's gonna come to that point where you will you will one day confess it. But you see, because we look we look at the we look at everything in black and white. God God understands and God is uh, patient with us. It's not like if you don't do something that He cuts you off right at that time and then no more uh, entrance to God. But what is the whole point of confession? Let, let me ask you a question. Supposing you go into the you want to take a bath, right? And you go into the bathroom and you wash your head and you wash your arms and your leg, but you don't wash your backside. So you come out still with, with it all dirty. Are you clean? No. no. So what's the point of going for the confession? What what is the point of going to take a bath? You go to take a bath to wash yourself and clean yourself. So if you're going to leave yourself dirty, what's the point of taking a bath? There's no point. There is nothing you can say that the yeah. priest hasn't heard. And was, honestly, there is nothing you can say that the priest hasn't heard. I promise you that. Because every sin that you say, that you, you have done the worst thing possible, God has already forgiven it. God has already forgiven it. It's only for you to make up your, your mind and your heart for you to come over there to Him. That's it. You know, like there's a story about this, this little boy, right? He was about five years old and he was playing with this, uh, what do they call that? That uh, yeah, yeah. The catapult, right? And this lady, his grandma used to live on the farm and they had a couple of ducks there. And so he was just messing around with the catapult and he took the uh, catapult and he...